We're lucky here at the University of Washington School of Music, and I'm sure we're the envy of every conservatory and music school in the country by having the most famous, the greatest bass player on the face of the earth, Gary Carr. Uh, Gary told me that he's never done anything like this before, and. I've never done anything like this before either, so this should be interesting. Um, when, it, when this idea hatched about having Gary here to do an interview, uh, I started thinking about it. This is months ago already, and then it was just last week that I thought, what's the best way to do this interview? And I. I thought, well, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to listen to every single Gary Carr recording that I own, which is a lot of recordings. And I started listening last week, and I stopped listening last night. And what I decided to do today is to play some of Gary's recordings that are my favorite recordings that he's done. And I'm sure that many of you have not heard them, because they're very early recordings, some of them. And we're going to start with the um, very first recording, solo recording that you did. Would you like, could you talk a little bit about that before we play it? Um, sure. <laughs> um, well, this was, I guess, um, the, the idea of doing this recording um, was discussed in 1961. I think the recording itself was 62. Um, and uh, I had um, appeared on uh, television with Leonard Bernstein in, in the New York Philharmonic on a program called Young People's Concerts in Carnegie Hall. And uh, it was, that in itself was uh, kind of uh, remarkable for me because it was like really diving in a pool of cold water. I had hardly ever played a solo with an orchestra, and my first orchestra is the New York Philharmonic. I mean, you know, it's a little strange. And, uh, uh, and someone there had heard me and, and, and wanted to offer to help uh, manage my career or to be a consultant in, in establishing a career. And that whole idea in itself was already something that I had probably in the back of my mind hoped for but never thought could ever be a reality. And, uh, and the first thing he said is, you have to make a, a recording. And so he approached some major recording companies, but being a bass player, nobody was really interested. They didn't think there would be a market. And he found a, a very good um, recording company that worked uh, in, primarily their, their whole push was excellence in, in, on Long Island, and it was called Golden Crest Records. And he knew the owner. So, he asked him, he said, sure, that'd be great. So that's how that came into being. And uh, I was a student at the Juilliard School at that time. Oh, <laughs> here's the recording. I, I, I was, actually, that's a later picture. There, I, it was re-released, and um, they used a, um, an older picture. But when I made the recording, I think I was 19. And I was uh, a student at the Juilliard School, and I was rooming with Jeffrey Siegel. So, um, the two of us went out to Long Island and uh, brought us, there's the original one, yeah. A stack of music. It, I'm very proud of this one because um, you, you all can't see it, but um, you know, I was a chubby guy um, all through my youth. And uh, so you could see there, fat kid. 
But uh, the important thing about this picture is the instrument and the scroll of it is over my head. Um, and you probably can't see it from where you are, but the scroll, this bass was um, sold to me in 1955 by my teacher, Hermann Reinshagen, um, who bought it in 1900. So he had it 55 years. And I think he sold it to me for the same price he paid for it in 1900. And, uh, and of course, I've kept that bass. And um, it, so I've had it now a few years short of the amount of time that he had it. And it's pretty unusual for basses <laughs> to, to have only two owners in, in 100 years. Um, the Amati also was uh, that case. Uh, Kuzvitsky, I, I had it for, um, I bought, he got that in 1901, and uh, I, I had it until last year. Um, anyhow, the base you're looking at to, to, to today, the scroll is the same scroll on that. That's, that's the base I was talking about. Boy, that was a big answer for a, a small question. That was a good answer. Okay. And it's the same scroll, same base, <laughs> same, same everything. Although I had some, I'll show you, uh, I, I had a couple things done to the instrument recently to bring it up to date. But we'll talk about that later. Well, what, what you're going to hear is the very first track of Gary's very first solo recording. And it is the first movement of the Echo Sonata. And uh, this particular recording, and especially this track, had a very strong effect on me as a young bass player growing up. I had never heard playing like that. And it inspired so many bass players that we're all in your debt for that. And it's interesting uh, because when I listened to this recently, I realized that I play this as much as I can, as identically to what you do. And um, it's just great playing. It'll so be interesting for me, because I haven't, I don't think I've heard it probably in 30 years or more. I mean, I maybe even longer. Well, I don't usually listen to my own recordings. I, they I, make I, me neither sick. do I. <laughs> 